trail of the truth for over 40 years. If anything, he's, he's probably the expert. He has spawned most of the, the researchers you know, such as Zachariah Sitchin and David Icke and so on. He brought them to the public. Jordan has not been credited in half the way that he should be. And, and I want to do that right here. And I, he's given some of our lead researchers some information, and they've never credited him. Okay, so you may think it comes from them and that they're so smart and brilliant. Believe me, they wouldn't be half the place they are today if it wasn't for Jordan Maxwell. And so we really want to honor him to here today. And we're very proud to have him speak at a Project Camelot conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think the one thing I'd like for you to take away from anything that I say today is this one point, that nothing in this world works the way you think it does. Nothing. The police aren't who you think they are. The sheriff is not who you think he is. Banks do not do what you think they do. Governments don't operate anywhere near the way you think they do. And that's why today, when you look at what's going on in the world today, none of it makes any sense. It's all crazy. It makes no sense at all. Seems very destructive. But actually, in point of fact, you don't know how the system works. It's working perfectly fine. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And the people, the masses, are entertained with television and alcohol and drugs and the wealthy continue to get wealthy, and so it's working perfectly fine once you understand how the world really works, and nothing works the way you think it does. My, uh, my whole life I have been interested in theology and religion, and that's my real love, and I've spent all my uh, awakened hours of research throughout the uh, country and throughout the world studying theology and religion, but not to learn from it, but to learn about it. And it's a fascinating story once you see how our religions came into being, and you begin to see uh, things that you've never seen before, and begin to have questions that never occurred to you before. And so uh, that's been my, my major love. But I also, in the early 80s, very early 80s, came into contact with some people who were experts, experts on government banking. And I was in their company for many years. And uh, I learned how governments work, and it was absolutely astounding to me to uh, see the real truth. Uh, it's taken me 48 years to get here tonight, but I'm going to give you uh, a secret that I've learned. I'm going to give this to you for free. This is a secret, and it's a very powerful secret. People will always, financially and in every other way, people will always support what they want to hear. They will not support what they don't want to hear. If you like country music, you're not going to pay 30 bucks for a rap concert. If you like a particular movie star, you're not going to go see some, somebody else. People will always, I mean, if you like a particular kind of food, you're not going to the opposite restaurant. So people will always support what they want to hear. And the one thing around the world that, that the ancient peoples and anyone who has traveled and dealt with the public, you will find the one thing that people, generally speaking, do not want to hear is the truth. Nobody uh, is happy when they have to be faced with the truth. And so there are some uh, brave people, like maybe you here today, who are at least open to hear something that, that may not it may conflict with what you believe or what you know but at least you're truth seekers. 
That's what I have always been as a truth seeker. I always say I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything because I'm at least smart enough to know how much I don't know. But when you begin to break down how government works, banks work, you begin to see a whole world that you've never known. The word I use is occult. Occult simply means hidden. And this is exactly what is going on in the world today. Our governments, banks, institutions of education, etc., are operating on a t totally occult or hidden basis. And so what we are told and given to understand is not the truth. Let me give you an example. How many people have heard me lecture or talk about the maritime system of, uh, of commerce? Okay, so most people at least have heard about, about the subject. Uh, for those of you who haven't, I'll just give you some examples. Oh, when you go into court, why do you have to go to court? You play tennis on a court. You play basketball on a court. The whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. So you have a team of lawyers, and they throw the ball back in the other guy's court, and that team throws the ball back in the other guy's court, and the judge is a referee. And, and he doesn't care who wins or loses. He's going to get paid anyway. So he wears a black robe. Black robes, most people never question, why do Catholic priests wear black robes? Kids that graduate from high school wear black robes. Judges wear black robes. Rabbis wear black robes. Because black robes represent the planet Saturn. They are a symbol for the planet Saturn. Saturn was called by the ancient people Lord of the Rings. And Saturn is Lord of the Rings. This is why women were told in the ancient world to listen to their God. And the concept was they would wear an ear ring. Men were to get married before their gods. They wear a wedding ring. Because the old ancient god of the Middle East, one of the ancient gods of the Middle East, uh, was the planet Saturn. Saturn was d directly connected to Yahweh, the Hebrew god. And so this is why even today the Jews celebrate the worship of Saturn. Saturn in the old Phoenician language was called Shabbat. Look up in the Phoenician language, you will find that the planet Saturn was called Shabbat. And his, his worship to honor him once a week was called Sabbath. So when, when the Jews are having Sabbath, they're actually paying homage to their god, Saturn, Lord of the Rings. And so when you start breaking down where religions have come from, theologies have come from, the six-pointed star, for instance, is, not, is called the Star of David. Actually, it's not the Star of David. All the encyclopedias and reference works will tell you that it's called the Star of Saturn. It is a hexagram. Hexagrams represented the planet Saturn. So, and then when you look at the Christian system of things, uh, the church is a, is a disgrace, in my opinion, period. The Christian church is a disgrace. Everything, everything that comes out of the Christian church in America is a disgrace. It's filled with lies, deception, innuendos. It is a money-making corporation. It operates on the maritime admiralty law. And there is a whole world of knowledge that Christians have not been given about the scriptures, about who wrote the Bible, where it came from. I have found that even Judaism is not a B.C. religion. It did not exist in the B.C. You know, so when we talk about ancient Jerusalem, there was no ancient uh, Israel. Jerusalem, yes, but no ancient Israel. So when you think about and how you have preachers and, and religious leaders talk about ancient Israel this and ancient Israel that, in point of fact, Israel is not a B.C. religion. The whole concept of the Old Testament was developed uh, right around the 9th, 10th, and 11th, and 12th century A.D. So that the Old Testament is not an ancient record of an ancient people. There was no ancient Israel. Two of the greatest scholars, archaeologists in Israel, <clears throat> have written a book called Unearthing the Bible. And these two men, these two archaeologists, are the best and the brightest of the archaeologists in Israel. 
And in their book, basically, that's what they said. There was no Moses, there was no King Solomon, there was no King David. The entire thing was written probably in the 8th, 9th, and 10th century AD in Europe. Uh, developed and ultimately taken, all of that was taken by the Jesuits in the Catholic Church and rewoven into a story and given to us today as an ancient Israel. There was no ancient Israel. Never existed. There was no Moses. There was no King, Sa King Solomon. Solomon was Saul Om On. Saul is Latin for the sun. Om is the Hindu word for the creative force. And On is the name of the sun in Egypt. The Greeks call it Heliopolis, but the Egyptians call the city of the sun On. Go look in a dictionary. Look up the word On. It will tell you it's the city of the sun in Egypt. This is why you flip a light switch on, because it was a city of light. So you take Saul, Om, On, the three names of the sun in the ancient esoteric languages, it becomes, temp it becomes Saul, Om, On, or Solomon. Even in the ancient Bibles, the old Bibles from uh, the 12th, 13th, and 14th century, um, in the Bible, it didn't say King, King David. It kept talking about King Druid. And incidentally, the, the, the system of government and laws that we live under today in America and in the Western world is a Druidic system. America is a Druidic country. Uh, Canada is Druidic. Uh, like I said, Western civilization is a Druidic establishment. The Druids were a very powerful priesthood in Europe, um, even before the Roman Empire existed. And they were, the, they were the attorneys, the lawyers, the religious leaders, the politicians. It was called the Druidic system. And uh, one of the most important symbols in the Druidic system was a magic wand, like Merlin the magician with his magic wand. And orchestra leaders and conductors use a magic wand. That's a Druid symbol. And the Druid symbol of the magic wand was made out of the wood of a holly tree. It's made out of Hollywood. And the entire establishment in Hollywood is a Druidic system. So if you don't understand Druidic symbols, you'll never know what's going on in Hollywood and where they're being financed, who's financing them, and how this stuff really works in relation to government. There is an enormous amount of material out on the web showing uh, pictures from motion pictures from five, six, seven years before 2000, uh, before 9-11, in which 9-11 is in motion pictures. And the original film of um, Matrix, in the original Matrix movie, the star is giving uh, some kind of an affidavit to sign, which is his identification or something. And the camera zooms in on it for just a moment when he's signing it. But if you stop the film, stop it and back it up and zoom in, you will see the, the, the document is about something that is going to happen. It says September 11, 2001. And this was way before September 11, uh, before 9-11. Uh, Chris Carter, classic example when I'm talking about Hollywood. Chris Carter, uh, the, the creator of uh, X-Files. Uh, when X-Files ended, Chris Carter, the producer, started a whole new television series called The uh, Lone Gunman. And the very first uh, movie was a, was a lead-off movie for the new television series. And in that movie, that came out right around February or March of 2001. February or March of 2001, Chris Carter's new television show called Lone Gunman was started on Fox Television. And in the very first episode, it's talking about how factions within the U.S. government were going to fly 757s into the World Trade Center and lock them down purposely. And in the movie, you're seeing the planes going into the World Trade Center. That was back in, you know, eight, eight months before it even happened. Chris Carter is telling you something in the movie. And, and in the movie, they, uh, they ask, well, why are these people in the government doing it? And the, one of the guys in government said, because, because we need to control the Middle East, we need to control the oil flow, 
We need to have a, a dominant uh, a place in the Middle East so that we can promote wars, which is good for business. And, uh, but that's in a movie. And it shows the planes going into the World Trade Center. General Electric, about three or four years before 9-11, uh, General Electric came out with a refrigerator in Italy. And on the face of the refrigerator, painted, were two jets flying into the World Trade Center. So it was the World Trade Center and two big planes flying into them. And I have many, many pictures from Hollywood showing 9-11 jets flying into the World Trade Center. So all I'm saying is that Hollywood knows what's going on. And this